Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. Hey Amen. you can turn in your Bibles to Psalm 42. That will be our text for today. Psalm 42. <clears throat> if I'm talking fast... It's because I want to get back to the altar at the end here for a song together. Forgive me. And our notes are online, calvarydover.org forward slash grow, where you can read our notes as well. I want to talk to you about a spiritual rut with God. Last week, we discussed the I can't change rut that's a lie from the devil because the gospel is all about transformation and change. This week, I want to talk to you about the most dangerous and probably a pretty common rut for us Christians at times is getting in a relationship rut with God, a spiritual rut. And it's dangerous because that's the most important relationship we need to have. And so if we're not in, in sync with God and we're not uh, hungry and thirsty for him, that's a sign that, you know, if you're seeing a dead plant on the ground or in your, in your yard, it's, it's time to water it, right? If you feel that way, it's God saying, let me feed and water you. Let me give you some symptoms of a spiritual rut. And I promise you, I'm not trying to convince you that you're in a rut. I just need to give you some symptoms. And here's why. Because sometimes we don't realize what we're missing out on. We don't realize we are in a rut with God. We don't realize maybe that, hey, we've been only experiencing a little bit of God or just a half-hearted relationship with him. And there's actually more. And I can identify with all of these at some point in my life. So just so you know... I'm talking to myself too. Okay, this could be convicting. Just a warning, all right? Your desire and hunger, here's a symptom. Your desire and hunger for God and more of him feels like it's lacking. When you try to pursue God, you have little to no endurance. You feel blah about your spiritual walk. Your flame for him feels like it's almost out. How about this one? Maybe you can relate. Your alone time with God is distracted and often interrupted by all the things in your head. Your alone time, oh, I'm sorry, you're not hungry for the word of God. You used to crave it and now it's not really there as much. And when you do read the word, nothing seems to move you. You know, you're reading this living word and it's just, it seems to not be ministering or moving you. Maybe you struggle to pray and, and when you do pray, your prayer is b- brief and lacks uh, fervor. How about this? You're less sensitive to the Spirit's conviction when you're under temptation. It used to be that you turned to God and fled temptation quickly, but now you still fight temptation today, but you have less zeal to fight it. You struggle to recognize and hear God's voice through all the noise going on. You ever felt that? Man, God, are you you there? Are you speaking? You can't seem to get the clarity and direction you need from God. Maybe you can't readily talk about what God has been teaching you lately, or you sing to him through worship, but your heart just isn't in it. Maybe you haven't shared the gospel for a long time and shared your faith to anyone for a long time. Or how about all of your testimony relates to past, but nothing current, nothing new that's happening in your life. Maybe you just feel like your spiritual walk is on autopilot. Okay, now that you feel depressed, let me fix that. (laughs) You know, the good news is there's more for you. There's more. Revival, just let's get this in our in our heads and our hearts. Revival is more of God, not less of God. Revival is more of God. And he does say, seek him, and you will find him if you seek him with all of your heart. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, not just half of your heart. So are we hungry for God or have we lost that a little bit? Remember when you were first saved, how hungry you were and how thirsty you were for the word and for fellowship and sermons and worship? You remember that? Well, guess what? You can have that again and you can live in that all the time. Do not listen to the enemy or or be satisfied with mediocre faith. And Christianity. You can experience God in a full and refreshing way every week. 
and not just here on Sundays. Am I preaching to anyone? Are you with me? Yes, Ryan, of course you're preaching to us. You're right. Let's look at what Scripture says. Psalm 42, a fascinating psalm. This is a descendant of Korah, who was a Levite who helped lead the Israelites in worship. And he is no longer in Jerusalem. And he's distant in his heart, in his eye, or his, his physical distance, I should say. In his mind, he's distant from God. But it doesn't stop him from longing for God. And I think that is really cool. Let's read it. Verse, verse 1 of, of Psalm 42. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. And then I love this question. When can I go and stand before him? In other words, like, again. When do I get to be with him again? You know what this is? This is a desperate desire for God, but not in a bad way, but in a good way. But it can be in a bad way because of his condition. But do you know that you can be desperate for God and still have a great relationship with him because you just want more and more of him? Okay? Now, in his situation, he's depressed. He's struggling. Look at, look at the next verse. Day and night, I have only tears for food. So the tears are running down his face and getting into his mouth. He's sad. He's depressed. And here's why. My heart is breaking. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go to, uh, I, I skipped over. While my enemies continually taunt me saying, where is this God of yours? And the temptation is to feel like you're disconnected from God, that God's not there. Verse 4 says, my heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I love this. He says, I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. See, he used to lead people in Jerusalem to worship God. And worshiping God at this time was kind of chained to a time and place, and that would be in Jerusalem. But we know today, because Jesus told the woman at the well that at, at at some point in time, you may worship, you won't worship at this mountain or that mountain. You will worship me in spirit and in truth. Amen. Now we get to worship God anywhere we go. And we can experience exactly what they experienced being in Jerusalem at the temple. We get to experience the fullness of God's presence anywhere we go. We don't have to just be at church. We don't have to be in our secret place that we have at our home that we've carved out. We can go anywhere and experience more of God. But he misses that place. He misses doing this with the church, with the Israelites. Verse 5 says, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? It's okay to acknowledge that, isn't it? But then he turns his focus the way we need to as well. I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. You see, we can turn our sadness, our sorrow, our depression and now look to God and remember him. And actually, that's what he says. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you. Even from distant Mount Hermon, that's where he is, the source of the Jordan, from the land of Mount Mizar. I hear the tumult of the raging seas as your waves and surging tides sweep over me. But then he says this, verse 8. But each day the Lord pours his unfailing love upon me, and through each night I sing his songs. Remember that dry plant? It says here that every day God poured his unfailing love upon him. You don't have to be dry and you could have a good thirst that wants more of God. Verse nine, oh God, my rock, I cry. Why have you forgotten me? Why must I wander around in grief, oppressed by my enemies? This is how he feels. Their taunts break my bones. They scoff. Where is this God of yours? And he finishes again, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Oh, to have a desperation for God like a deer that pants for water. I have a craving for him. And even when you're going through a lot, the best thing you can do is cry out to God. 
the best thing you can do when you're struggling is to cry out to God. And it's not always feelings, it's fact. He is there. I don't feel God. He's there. It may take time because the hurt is overcoming your, your emotion with God, your connection, the spirit of God working in you. But the truth is he is there to pour out his unfailing love upon you. And sometimes you need to sit there and keep praising him until you sense his presence. Well, the reason why this is important to me is because a common spiritual rut with God that I've heard and even I have had to address in my life over the years is a lack of hunger and thirst for God. And I want to address this because we won't live in the revival life God has for us if we don't even have a desire for him. I mean, this is so simple. But if God, if, if more of God is revival and if, if there is more of God and we lack a desire for him, you will not experience revival. And we need to deal with this rut. If you feel like you have not been craving him and thirsty for him and hungry for him, that's a warning sign to make some adjustments in your life because he is so amazing. We should be hungry and thirsty for him. Something's off. And it's okay to admit that. Okay, it's okay to admit that. Uh, here's some, re, let me review real quick while we get into ruts. Just for those who may be new this week, I showed you these last week. Uh, a few reasons. Doing the same thing over and over again. Well, that's a good thing if your heart is in it. It could be a bad thing if you're just doing it because you're supposed to do it. It becomes routine and rote. All right? Distractions, keeping you from connecting with God. Disobedience, keeping you from going in the will of, of God. Disconnection and distance, you kind of step back. Maybe because of the distractions or disobedience, you step back from God and distance yourself. Doubting him over and over again, it now becomes a risk of becoming unbelief in your life. And then deception from the enemy. Sometimes he can deceive us and uh, get us in ruts as well. And we listen to him and we listen to the lies. And so we need to be careful. But why would we possibly not be hungry and thirsty for God? I have three things for you. And the first one is this. Why, why would we, my, let me put it this way, because some of you guys might be thinking, Ryan, you're assuming that I'm hungry and thirsty for God. Well, in case you are, or in case you catch yourself in this place again, let me give you at least three, there's more, three things to address. Number one, uh, we may be hungry and thirsty for God, or we may not be, I mean, because we spoil our appetite. We spoil our appetite. Can you imagine being invited to the best barbecue in the South? Is it almost lunchtime? It is. Ribs. Mac and cheese. Cornbread. Baked beans, if that's your thing. Green beans. <laughs> Get a little excited over here. Sorry if you're fasting today, my bad. You just, you're invited and, and, and you show up and the host says, let me fix you a plate. And you're like, nah, I'm good, I already ate. That's, that's rude, first of all, don't do that. But they go, well, what, what, did, what did you have to eat? I had a TV dinner before I came over. <laughs> a TV dinner? Shame on you. Now, you're like, hey, don't, don't, get, don't be hard on TV dinner. Some of them are good. I'm just saying fresh, delicious food, and you settle for a TV dinner? You know, we do that spiritually. God has a full course or four course meal for us, and we're settling for the things of this world and haven't shown up to feast with him yet. Man, that spoils our appetite. Proverbs 27, 7 says, a person who is full refuses honey. Now, at this time, that would have been a great treat. But even bitter food tastes sweet to the hungry. We don't want to get so full on the things of this world or, or even always getting our life from people, which, by the way, people aren't very good all the time of giving us life because they drain as well. We do that, 
and we never go to God for, for life for our spirit and soul. And he doesn't want us to do that. He wants us to go to him first. In the parable of the sower, there were four seeds. And one of the reasons one of them gets choked out is because of these three things. The cares of this world. Why, why does the word get choked out of someone's life? Why does someone not crave the word of God or more of God? The cares of this wor- world take over. Deceitfulness of riches, you know, pursuing the riches and, and the power and all those things. And then the lust of other things or pleasures of this life. All of those things begin to choke out your hunger and your appetite for God. Meanwhile, God is life and food for our soul and everyday living, not this world. Let me keep moving forward. This one hurts. This one hurts. I was convicted by this one again. We get too busy. Number two, we get too busy and distracted. Have you ever been too busy to eat? I forgot to eat. Oh my goodness, I've been so busy. There's a modern day parable. It's not in the Bible, but it's a modern day story of a man who moved into a town and he found this great bakery and he began to visit the bakery every day and buying the delicious treats and and breads and muffins. And after a while, he kept going to this bakery and he met the baker and he just noticed week after week, the baker looked different. He looked tired. He began to thin out. And he wondered, and he began to wonder, what was going on with this baker? And it hit him. The baker was so busy feeding everyone else, he never fed himself. We can do that to our own souls. We can be so busy and distracted with life that we forget and we neglect the care and the feeding of our souls with God. And God has a lot of great bread to give us in his word, a lot of nutrition, a lot of life for us. I want to read something to you that I feel like is from God, and it's, it's, to be honest with you, it's a revelation, and it, not a new revelation, not new scripture or anything. It's, it actually is revealing something that I've dealt with, and so I'm being completely vulnerable and real with you today. This is me. This is what happened to me over the years, and I have to be on guard that I don't do this again, Okay. In regards to being too busy, when we get too busy and distracted, our souls run on empty. And I would love to say that we crawl right back to God, but at this point, we go to other things that don't satisfy our health. You know what I'm talking about? We've gotten so distant, it takes a few days to get back in tune with God. But here's the problem. We're so busy and in a hurry that reconnecting with God is taking too long. So we quit before we get fed by God. That's the, that's the disease of hurriedness and busyness is that we get busy and now we get in trouble in our souls and then we're so busy that when we have to slow down long enough to be fed by God, he's taking too long. And something hit me one day. The reason why God's not speaking to me for three days or I'm not feeling him, I'm not getting anything from his word is because he's teaching me to be disciplined to slow down again. Because if I do slow down as a pattern and culture of my life, then I'll be more likely able to hear his voice and receive from his word. But what's happened in my life many times as a busy pastor, busy father, busy uh, husband, friend, is I've been so busy that when I go to connect with God and more than just for sermons, for my personal life, it's a struggle and I get impatient and God's trying to teach me to be patient because I got a good word for you and I'm gonna fill you, but you've been too far from me for too long and it's time to slow down. And here's why. And here's, here's the concern with that. Now, our distance isn't making the heart grow fonder, it's making it wander. You know, they say that. Distance makes the heart grow fonder. Not with God, it makes you wander. He wants to be with you but we're getting too busy and distracted, neglecting the greater thing, which is to be with Christ. Thirdly, we can be sick. Why are we not hungry maybe? Why are we not thirsty? We can be sick spiritually. I've never met a person sick to their stomach that can eat barbecue food. If you've done that, I would like to meet you today. You had a stomach bug and you wanted to go to Mission Barbecue and feast. I don't know anyone like that. You know, you can go through so much in your life. 
You can be going through something with bitterness and offense with someone or depression and worry and fear and anxiety so much that you actually struggle to connect with God. You know what I'm talking about? Or the other thing that can make us sick is the classic sin. The sin in our lives that has now hurt our heart and where our conscience is, is hurt and we don't think God's gonna like love us and accept us. All of a sudden, God doesn't forgive you anymore and you become spiritually sick and you run away from God. But the heart of God says, come to me. Psalm 42, when he was sad and despaired, he reached out to God. That's exactly when we should go to him. And we don't want to sin and we don't want to mess up, but we do that at times. We've made those mistakes. We are uh, dealing with the human nature and the sinful nature still. And when we do, the best thing to do is to come back to God. Let me give you a scripture verse for that, James 4, 7 through 8. So humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The devil's involved behind the scenes. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. What should you do to come close? He says that in the next verse. Wash your hands, you sinners, meaning purify your hearts. For your loyalty is divided or has been divided between God and the world. Mixing the two together don't work with God. He wants all of you. But the cool thing is if we, if we turn to God, guess who's there? He is. And he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. All right, Ryan. Okay, you got me. I'm in one of these ruts maybe, okay? How do I get out of it? That's a good question to answer, isn't it? How do we get out? of a spiritual rut, a, a relationship rut with God, well, number one, we really just need to reconnect with God. We need to reconnect with God. One of my favorite Psalms is Psalm 27, 8. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Now, recently I was... Um, I was in my bedroom, my wife was falling asleep, I'm watching news, and I had already spent time with God. Just so you know, though, I don't put God in boxes, so I want to hang out with him all day if I can, okay, and stay, stay open to him speaking to me and read the word throughout the day if I want to, on breaks, whatever. But I had spent time with God, and I'm, I'm watching the news, and I'm telling you, it was like an audible voice, but it was, it was more drawling. And, and I, this is what I heard, or this is what I felt. I can't explain it. It was, come here, a whisper, come here. I'm like, well, that has to be God because he wants me to be with him all the time. You know, and, and I knew exactly that it was God because I was drawn to go be with him in the front room, in our living room. I knew exactly what couch, what cushion I would sit on. And I knew to bring my Bible, pad of paper, and a pen because I was about to encounter God. And I forgot to say this at 9 o'clock, but I first actually just got on my knees and prayed. And while my family is sleeping, I had an encounter with God. Now, that was extra for the day, and I loved it. I loved it. When God calls you like that, I highly suggest you run to him. But the problem that we um, have in Christianity at times is we wait for those moments instead of just doing it on our own desires as well. Do not wait for God to call you when you're hungry and desperate and lost, you may not even hear his voice. That's the problem. Be going after him every day. And what happens is he's like, I got a little more for you today. I hope you're ready. And man, it was an amazing moment. Secondly, taste and see that the Lord is good. We've been nibbling on the world so much we forget how good God is. We start feasting on the Lord. Psalm 34, 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys, he wants to be happy, he wants to be full of joy, of those who take refuge in him, in God. Here's the principle with spiritual hunger versus physical hunger. When we physically eat, we get full, and we don't want to eat anymore, right? Like you had a good meal at Texas Roadhouse today, you're like, do not put food in front of my face right now. Okay? But spiritually, when we are fed by God's presence and word, guess what happens? We get hungrier and want more. Because your soul isn't meant to be satisfied with just a little. Your soul is meant to be satisfied with all of God. And he's eternal, so he can do that. 
So physically, you won't want to eat. Spiritually, the more you taste, the more you feast on him, your hunger and appetite for him increases. That's why the point here is, is to reconnect with God. And it may take a few days to feel or experience him, but he is there and he's waiting and he's ready to pour out. Okay? Thirdly, sometimes we need to fast so that we can feast on God. Sometimes we need to fast so we can feast on God. Uh, let me, let me uh, clarify something real quick when it comes to fasting. Uh, we don't fast sin. We, we stay away from it. Fasting isn't for sin. Fasting is, is extra discipline. Fasting out some good things in our lives like food, like physical food, or time in front of the TV, whatever. Those things can become a dependency that God doesn't have room to move. So we fast out food to say, God, I don't depend on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth, from your mouth. It's to say, I, I fast that to, to show you I love you and I want more of you. I'm going to spend the time I would cooking or, or going out to get my lunch during work. I'm going to hang out in my car and I'm going to let you feed my soul because it's hungry. That's why we fast. We don't fast sin. We're just supposed to stay away from it. But here's the reality. Some things that we're given into over and over again have become a source of temptation and now have caused us to sin. So we should fast some things that are causing us to walk out in sin, and we shouldn't be. Amen? Amen. So we fast. I want to encourage you this week. This week, skip a meal. Just even if it's one time. Skip a meal this week and hang out with God alone. Just get alone with him, just you and God. All right? At nighttime this week, spend an hour with God before you go to bed. Ryan, that's a lot. What about just 10 minutes? Okay. (laughs) I don't know about you, but it takes about 10 minutes for my mind to lock in. Okay? So an hour, hang out for an hour before you go to bed with God. You may not even be able to sleep after that, just so you know. You know what I'm talking about. It gets powerful. It gets powerful. Fast so that you can grow a hunger for the Lord. Uh, I want to close with these points, and I'm going to go a little fast so we can worship and sing a song to God. But I, I, God led me to this this week. I did not expect it. God wants to pour out times of refreshing upon you. He wants to dry, uh, he wants to, to fill and, and saturate your dry souls. He, he is so gracious that he will come after you even if you're not coming after him, which is unbelievable. But he also says, come after me too and seek me. And so I, I prefer that one first so he doesn't have to chase me down. But he wants to refresh your soul. And there's ways that that happens. And the first one, where and when do we experience times of refreshing? We experience it in the word of God. Psalm 19.7 says, The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving or refreshing the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. Church, I, I can't tell you how many times God has refreshed me from being in the word and reading it. Again, if you're not getting that, it may take some days, and that's part of the discipline too, is continuing coming back to him. Secondly, God's presence and provision of refreshment. Psalm 23, 1 through 3 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. That sounds like overflow to me. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. See, God was calling me out to give me even more that night. And he does it over and over again. And I too pursue him, so he leads me to refreshment. The Holy Spirit does this. Isaiah 44, 3, for I will pour water on the thirsty land. You feel thirsty today? Like you need a revival? And streams on the dry ground, I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. That began in Acts chapter 2, and Pentecost Sunday is coming up, actually. June 5th. Jeremiah 31, 25, I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. Sounds good to me. What about this? Sometimes, sometimes sin has caused us to not be able to receive because we put a little block between us and God instead of a flow of God just pouring into us. Sometimes sin does this, okay? And he won't show up 
sometimes until you realize what you've done. Okay? And then a lot of times it's his conviction. But the further away we get from God, the less we are feeling that conviction. That's why I'm trying to address this rut today. Do you know that one of the best ways to be refreshed by God is to repent and turn back to him? Acts chapter 3, 19 through 20 says, Now repent of your sins and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. Then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. That's a promise. Proverbs 3, 7 through 8. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment in your bones. Sometimes we get so lost in sin and worry and hurt that our bodies are aching and hurting and we need to be refreshed by coming back to God. And lastly, we can also experience refreshing moments with God in serving and in fellowship with other believers. You may not think that. Maybe you've had some bad experiences at times. But the reality is that we, the church, are supposed to be there to refresh one another. Let me give you some scriptures on that. Proverbs 11.25, a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. I love what Philemon 1 says. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Paul says this to the church in Romans 15, 32. I'm coming. I want to visit you again so that I may come to you with joy by God's will and in your company be refreshed. 1 Thessalonians 5, 11. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. What about Hebrews 10, verse 25? Do not forsake the assembly because there's people get in the habit of doing that. Do not forsake coming together as a body of Christ. We skip verse 24, and I've said this before. It says, to spur one another on towards love and good deeds, to encourage one another. We're supposed to do that. This past week, I met with two people I've never met with before. And I was so refreshed by our fellowship and our conversation about things in their life. And the reason why I was refreshed is because... God was able to use me to minister to them in ways I did not expect. God gave me words to say for them. God led me in scriptures for them. And they were so blessed by that time that watching them be encouraged encouraged me. Why would that be? Because I see God is still working. God is still helping. God is still moving. And if you're like, I don't see God moving, I don't feel him, I don't see him working, let me tell you, get with some believers who are going after God too. Oh, you're going to experience more of God. You're going to experience a refreshing moment with the Lord. You probably felt it today, amen? One of the reasons why we're so into group life is because we want more of God outside of Sunday, and we know that some of you have been gifted with encouragement, or some of you have been given words from the Lord to share with other people in your group. It may be that you get together for coffee with one person and God wants to use you to refresh that person's soul. Yes, that is why the church exists. Do not overlook where scripture says that you will be refreshed by being the company of other believers. It is key to helping people be encouraged and getting through a week or living in revival. What I'm saying is, We actually need each other to experience revival. So I highly encourage you to begin. Don't wait for us to always create moments of groups and connection. Begin to meet with other believers that go to this church or another Christian you have and begin to encourage and refresh each other. However, our family fun night next Friday night isn't meant just to keep the the kids busy, although that does help parents. The purpose behind that is so that you will be refreshed by the fellowship of fellow believers. That's the point. That's the point. And God wants to pour out his spirit upon us. Are we hungry? Does our our souls long after him like a deer pants for water? And maybe today God's going to just get you completely woken up from it, just awaken your soul Water your soul and feed it. And he's going to pour on you today. If you feel dry 
and that you, you have lacked that hunger and desperation, let's, let's close our eyes and let's stand together because we're going we're gonna to worship. And if you feel that way, first of all, I'm going to do this. You can come to the front, but this whole room is an altar. This whole room, God goes back there, God's here, God's online in your homes. I'm telling you, if you feel dry and you've been lacking a hunger and thirst for God, his will is for you to experience his presence, to be saturated in him. And so during this song, I'm not gonna complicate this, during this song, go after God. Sing it from your heart. If you, even if you don't sing the words and you just start talking to God, do that. And these altars are open. Our prayer team will be up here to pray for you. And here's the other thing. Begin to seek the Holy Spirit because the Spirit of God is the refreshing of our souls that we need today. Begin to seek the Holy Spirit, more of him. Lord, move in this place today as we worship you. We thank you for the reminder, God, that, that we ought to be hungry and thirsty for you. And maybe we've spoiled it a little bit. Maybe we've gotten distracted or we've been sick spiritually. And, and Lord, forgive us for that. Thank you for showing us that. And God, show us more so we can know what we're pursuing too. Show us more of your revival. Begin to minister to everyone who comes or stays in their seats and opens their hearts to you, Lord, in our homes as well. Lord, saturate our souls today. May your spirit be poured upon us. We love you, God, and we thank you for this church. I want to encourage you that if you're not feeling that hunger for God right now, do not condemn yourself. Many of us have been maybe so thirsty and so starving in our souls that it's going to take time. Pastor Jody has talked about that. And to be honest with you, God needs more time to do things. There's a lot that needs to be done. And so do not condemn yourself or you know, feel bad that you don't feel a hunger after God in this moment. I want to encourage you to make a place in your home that you will go after God. And God is going to do even more than what he can do in here. It just helps at times to be with each other and pray over one another. And so I just want to encourage you with that. I don't want anyone to leave here with self-condemnation. That's what the devil does. God doesn't do that. And I tell you, for me, I love, I love to encounter God more at home and here. I love more of him in both places, wherever I need to go. And so God is going to do that. And here's why I want to encourage you. If you need to go and pursue your day, we're not going to judge you for that or anything. <laughs> it's all good. We have things that we, we're going to move into. And guess what? You can hang out with God tomorrow, tonight, whatever you want. So I want to encourage you, if you need to go, please do. If you need more of God or you, you want to pursue him right here in this moment, I know we all need more of God. But if you want to stay a little longer, you're welcome to. The altars are open. We're going to pray over you. And uh, we, just, we just want to keep letting God move in this moment. We do have a water baptism to get to, so we will be celebrating revival life here in a moment, right over here. So praise the Lord. <clears throat> yes, excited. We have 11 people that have given their life to Christ, ready to get water baptized, and so we're going to do that in a moment. But if you, if you want a, a prayer over your life, or if you want more of the, the Holy Spirit, you want to be, you know, seek the Holy Spirit, please do. Stay up here for a moment. I love you. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. We'll see you next week.